Paul the Apostle wrote many remarkable counsels in his epistle to the Christians in Rome's capital. But the story of why Paul wrote Romans gives meaning and life to this famous piece of parcel. For one of the opening lines, which helps marshal in the story of this theological colossal says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is salvation to the Jew first, but also the Gentile. You see, Paul wrote Romans to address the rising tension that had arisen among Rome's Christians. And that tension was around the question, how are Gentiles to be included in Jewish tradition? And this tension arose because as the church in Rome began to grow, the emperor Claudius heard of some Jews who started following a man called Christus. So this Roman emperor, not knowing the difference between Jews and Christians, issued an edict which ordered the removal of all Jewish people from Rome's populace. And so the Jews left Rome and spread among countries and continents to make a new home away from Roman opulence. This removal left synagogues, house churches, and new Roman believers without Jewish tradition, knowledge, or any of their teachers. But after Claudius died, And after the edict expired, many of Abraham's descendants started to return to Rome's metropolis. And as they did this, as both Jewish and Gentile Christians who had recently put their faith in Jesus started to meet together, they realized that the way they viewed the Old Testament law was full of differences. Because when the Jews saw what they thought to be the Gentiles' neglectful attitude toward the law, many of them chose to conclude that there could be no way God would include these Gentiles in God's chosen people, the Jews. But in Romans, Paul solves this confusion by writing that everyone is a lawbreaker. There are no exclusions. Both Gentile and Jew have broken God's commands and need absolution. For while the Gentiles may have neglected the law, the Jews were just as guilty. For though they obeyed some of its traditions, like all people, they did not keep it perfectly. But it wasn't only that the Gentiles seemed to turn aside from the law's commands. It was also that they were not circumcised like their forefather, Abraham. But in Romans, Paul explains that Abraham was not saved by works, but by faith. For long before he was circumcised, God declared him righteous for believing in the promises he made. But Even if both Jews and Gentiles break the law, even if they both transgress, even if circumcision isn't necessary for God to call someone blessed, surely the Gentiles still need the law to keep their behavior in check. For without it, won't they just break God's commands and expect his grace to do the rest? But in Romans, Paul answers this expected protest by explaining that all the law can do is tell you what sin is. It cannot make you new. But when anyone, whether Gentile or Jew, believes the good news, they are made into people who can actually do what the law commands them to do. But the Jews would surely wonder, If the Gentiles are saved apart from the law, and if it's faith, not birth or circumcision that makes them a child of Abraham, then had God simply replaced them? What about the covenant God made with Israel? Did God break his promise to save them? But in Romans, Paul answers by saying that birthright has never been the only qualification. For before either of Abraham's twin grandsons were born, God made a separation. 
God chose Jacob, but said Esau I hated, to show that no one, not even the Jews, the direct descendants of Abraham, deserve his grace. So, if God chose Jacob, he could choose to include the Gentiles all the same. But this does not give the Gentiles any room to boast. For if God chose to include them in his fold, while he has cut off many Jews who received the promises of old, then Gentiles should hold fast to this faith of which they've been made heirs. They must stop the idolatrous practices of their culture in which they are ensnared. For if God did not spare Israel when they disobeyed, neither will Gentiles in their disbelief be spared. The church in Rome was torn in two between the Gentiles who wanted freedom from the law and the insistence that it be kept by the Jews, which would have made the way Paul chose to conclude his letter all the more difficult for the Roman Christians to live by. For the way Romans was written, the way its arguments were designed, end with a call to action on both sides of the battle lines. In Romans, Paul tells both Jews and Gentiles alike to offer their bodies as a living sacrifice, to not think along their former divides, but to be transformed by the renewing of their minds. They are to be one with each other, though they are full of differences. The strong are to help the weak by giving up their privileges. They are to seek peace with those they see as enemies and honor each other other despite backgrounds or ethnicities, but how could those with so much enmity be expected to find such reconciliation and unity? Well, in Romans, Paul constantly points to the key. For not only was Paul unashamed to name what made the Jews and Gentiles hostile, he was also not ashamed to proclaim the name of Jesus and his gospel. For the only reason it could be good news that both Gentile and Jew had broken God's law is because Jesus had come as their substitute. He picked up the punishments they had earned and obeyed all the laws so both Jew and Gentile could be made equal at the foot of the cross. You see, they were not equal because they shared Abraham's name, but because they shared Abraham's faith. For when Abraham looked forward to the descendant God promised who would bless all nations with his light, he didn't know his name, but he was putting his faith in Christ. So when anyone trusts Jesus, no matter their background or birthright, they are brought by grace into Abraham's family line. For just as God chose to give Jacob his blessing over Esau, though he did not deserve to receive it, Jesus saves us, not because we deserve it, but because we need it. It is only because the gospel is so good that Paul could command the Romans to such a hard sacrifice. They could only be one with each other because they are one in the body of Christ. They could only love one another because of how Jesus loved them when he laid down his life. And so the tension in Romans was solved but not by everyone putting aside their cultures and differences, but by seeing how Jesus fulfilled the law and its traditions. For the law isn't just a Jewish composition, nor is it an old rule book that deserves Gentile opposition. It is a story that points to Jesus. Its ethnicity is inherently Christian. That is the point of Romans, that the law wasn't given for one group but to show all nations their need for the gospel. All are one through faith in Christ. So wrote Paul the Apostle. 
Hey, I'm David with Spoken Gospel. Thank you so much for watching our introduction to the book of Romans. We are a nonprofit making video introductions to every single book of the Bible, showing that book's main theme and how that theme is fulfilled in Jesus and his gospel. We give all of our resources away for free and we're able to do that because of generous people like you who watch our videos and support us. So if you wanna join our team and help us make more of these videos, head over to SpokenGospel.com.